Welcome back. All the smoke. L.A. run. Yes, sir. Had a good day. But, man, we get to sit down with, Point man, God. the newest member of the All the Smoke production team family. Thank God. Welcome to the team and the show, Rajon Rondo. Yeah. 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 Family. Welcome, man. I mean, already family. We're here. We've been talking for a few months, and and we're really excited. We were able to get this deal done with you, and it, just excited to what you bring to this space as far as a lot of knowledge in the game, a lot of years in the game, a champion, a future Hall of Famer. What is your goal in this content space? Um, just to kind of share my knowledge of the game. You know, um, a lot of projects I want to get into eventually. Um, but, you know, first off, I want to say thank you to you all mm -hmm. for taking this chance with me. And I feel like it's going to be a great fit, obviously. Mm -hmm. Our personalities are similar off the court and uh, how we play the game on the court as well. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of synergy in this group. And uh, it's glad to be a part of this. Yeah, we're glad to have you, bro. Uh, last time we talked, you were fresh off a of bubble championship in 2020. Um, Another one. What's new? What's going on? I know you're going back to school right now. Yeah. I know you haven't officially retired. Like, what's going on in your day to day? <laughs> Uh, day to day, man. I'm actually uh, I'm on spring break, so I'm out here on spring break. This guy's a student. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. he's, he's in L. A. for spring break. Right. <laughs> uh, so I am in school full time, student now. So, uh, back is this trying to finish Monday my through, not to cut you off. Monday through Friday online. How is it? No, I, I got um, I got two in person and two online. Okay. So, um, and actually, you're back in Kentucky. I'm back in University of Kentucky. Man, that's dope. I go twice a week. Uh, okay. I take the drive down, but like I said, it's fun. Uh -huh. I'm loving this new adventure. Um, they definitely paying for it. <laughs> the NBA is paying for it, right? Yeah. Paying for it. Well, yeah, speak to that because I don't think a lot yeah. of guys, you and I, Tyler, I don't think right. a lot of guys realize that the NBA will pay for you to go back and get your degree. I don't know if Jack has a chance because he never even started his shit, but for those who already tiptoed in college, uh, yeah. talk yeah, to how that Even, even not if you haven't tiptoed, I mean, um, the league still, I think, up to like maybe six years of retirement um, will pay for your education up to, I think, $20,000. So as long as you maintain a certain GPA, they'll pay for it and you get it done. So I, I, I commend and whoever, everyone has ever done it or going back, but I encourage guys that aren't playing anymore or haven't played, uh -huh. you know, help them transition because a lot of guys don't yeah. necessarily do well with retirement or right. not have something to do. But school for me has been fun. I'm yeah. actually enjoying it more now than I did, you know, 18 years ago when yeah. I was back in the UK trying to just get to the league. Right. So what is it like being back on campus at 38? I mean, we were just at UCLA the other day, and we had to hurry up and get off campus because there was just a lot of shit going on. Yeah, uh, yeah, not too much. But what was, I mean, what's it like? I mean, obviously, our, our mindsets are way different from when we were 18, Absolutely. 19, 20, walking on our respective campuses. Now you're a grown man with a family and a, and a whole career behind you. What's it like on the day-to-day? -day? I mean, pictures, seeing old uh, professors. I mean, what's the day-to-day -day like um, on campus? Day-to-day, -day, you know how I move. You know, I'm pretty much in and out. Mm -hmm. um, I park right where I need to park to get on campus to get to class. Um, like I said, my earlier semester classes, like last year, there were longer walks, but these two in particular I go to this semester. Um, then right next door, um, I go to class from, I don't get this time, but I go to class mm -hmm. you know, on Tuesday and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like I said, it's no big deal. I okay. go to class, one of my, one of my classrooms is about 12 kids, mm -hmm. uh, 12 young, young men and women. Mm -hmm. And then the also other class is 135. So okay, bigger it's class. fun, yeah, it's, it's, it's both dope. fun. I'm learning a lot and uh, I'm just glad I'm doing it. I'm like thinking so, I'm throwing the idea out there already and making it come to fruition. So my twins want to go to UCLA and okay. I'm like a semester away from graduating. So if they go back to school, I'm gonna go back to school, but I want to turn it into a show. Like I want to okay. turn it into like a scripted, dramedy Absolutely. about a washed up NBA player going back to school with like two up and coming five star right. sons. That's so okay. Hell of a mix, I think yeah. I might do that, man. So we're going to see. Your son, your coach now. Um, mm -hmm. I get a chance to coach my kids. Jack coached uh, in the past. But what is that experience like? He just went viral on uh, Ball is Life. So what's that, that What's that journey like? It's a different way. I want to talk to you about that too because you shook your head. Yeah. What's it like being coaching your son and just seeing that, uh, you know, him excel in something he loves so much? Um, it's a joy. You know, it's definitely a joy to coach my son, and, and that, he's at the stage now where he he's listening. So I mean, how old is he? Know. 11, he's, 12? He's, uh, he's twelve. Twelve. He's twelve, and uh, he's a sponge of the game. You know, he wants to get better each time, and <clears throat> me, uh, you know, explain to him, understand that he's a, he has a target on his back. And yeah. uh, as you mentioned, him just going viral. We just came back from a big tournament down in Hoover, and you know, all the cameras around the court now. So he's starting to get a lot of the notoriety and a lot of the attention. But for me, I'm just trying to keep him as humble as possible. Uh, he doesn't have social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when my team is with me that particular weekend, I shut social media down because mm -hmm. I think that's affecting these kids mm -hmm. to win. They don't give a damn if you win or lose. It's like as soon as you get out, out, of, the, um, out of the game, they're on the ground. Who tagged me? Who posted me with what? Mm -hmm. It's like that's, that's, that's fucking our young kids' heads up. And that's just not what we allow in our program for mm -hmm. the most part. I like that. So. Jamal Crawford made a post a few weeks ago about – parents and and outside noise and obviously we came up in a different time you're a little bit younger than us but in the same same kind of age group and wave all this you know again 
kids can loop me three and done or two and done, but you'll see a highlight tape up, you know, the next second. Right. So what is like your, your focus and, and, and how successful you obviously touched on how successful has it been on, on understanding what the big picture in, but also enjoying the ride, allowing the kids to enjoy the ride. Yeah. For me, that's what it's about. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty strict on the road. Obviously I'm a lot of kids may, you know, a lot of parents may send their kids with, with just me and the coaches. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're their extended dads on the road. And for me, it's uh, it's a great experience because I, I teach them discipline. Um, we go to bed at a certain time. I take the phones. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I always say we don't have social media. And it's a business trip. Mm -hmm. Kind of how we approach it in our game, I try to teach them the same level Early. of how, how we do it in the NBA. It's like mm -hmm. I said, we come here, we ain't getting in swimming pools. We ain't doing this in the third. We're going to probably go to movies and sit and relax if we get a good time. Or other than that, we're there for business. We watch uh, film more than any probably NBA team combined. I mean, we <laughs> after each game, because at that age, again, you're learning the game so Teaching. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, instead of arguing with my kids back and forth, I just pop the tape in. And then I, you know, there's nothing to argue about. I have the whole team vote. Was this a travel? Was this a foul? And they get the coach themselves. And not only, you know, just hearing me thinking mm -hmm. I'm just crazy and talking to the all the time, it's like, here's the proof. Right? See it. And then when they know, they get to film, and they're, they heard, it changed their mindset within the game. Mm -hmm. They know, okay, shit, I'm, I'm have to get up the screen now because last time in film, I saw we had talked about this. So mm -hmm. it's easy for me to teach the kids and I don't, I don't have to go back and forth with them a lot because right after the game, we, we jump right in the, uh, in the van and we watch it. I love it. So. <laughs> Talk to us about, I mean, we all grew up playing on the blacktops and playing pickup games and there was a little bit of training. Now it's so much one-on-one -on -one training and then just games. And I feel like kids don't really know how to play the full game of basketball. Everyone needs the ball in their hands to be effective these days. Correct. So talk to us about kind of just the new form of training because I feel like kids are very skilled and even the younger players in the league, super, super skilled. But I feel like they lack just an overall understanding of the game and sometimes lack a little bit of IQ as well. I think the, the big reason is that because now scoring is glorified. Uh, the game is pushed so much. So if you can score, you can play. If you can score, you can get to the league. It's like uh, I think the game is a, it's a lost art of actual leaders on the court. Uh, like myself, um, you know, who can actually, if a coach got ejected, can run the entire game, mm -hmm. you know, know who to get the ball to. Nowadays, again, when you're training and you're working out, you're working out against the cone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these cones in the games move, and then it doesn't translate into the game to where you're just focused on individual play and don't know how to make your teammates better or doing intangibles or things that don't show up on ESPN, uh, all the little things that make a team mm -hmm. uh, click, come together. And um, for me, like I said, the main thing is just being a leader. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't teach the game from just playing – or just drilling with a trainer mm -hmm. four days a week. Go back and work for us. We hooped. Yeah, we yeah. hooped. I mean, it was we hoop. We hoop more than train. I mean, that's just how it was. So, uh, and these guys don't have the opportunity. Obviously, it's it's not as safe, you know, with all the parks and shit closing, especially back in my, my neighborhoods. Uh, you can't just go pick, go get a pickup game going, mm -hmm. you know. So it does have to be always a school ball game or mm -hmm. something of that particular nature because of the safety. But kids still don't play enough. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't play the game enough. They they rather train than play because again, training it taught you how to make in-game adjustments quicker than when you actually get on a, a game where it counts to pick mm -hmm. up ball, you can't, you can't relate or you can't revert back well, to I feel it. like there needs to little, be a little bit more mix of two because I feel like one of the issues is they play a lot of games, but they're just games, so they're not structured or controlled. So I think there needs to be more practice time. But right. that's hard if you have a team that has kids from different states and in and, 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 and different cities. But I feel like, you know, they're either training or they're playing actual games. I think there needs to be a little bit more control so you can control them and, and help make the, you know, help correct the mistakes right. in the games before they come habits. So, I mean, we got kids in it. We're going to see how it goes. But, yeah. I mean, I, I think our kids have a, an upper hand because they had dads that have been to the top of the mountain right. and understand what it takes to get there. But let, go back to what you said about what Jamal posted. Um, and I actually reposted it. it. It is the parents that are killing the game. Um, you know, I see so many parents now and just got their cameras in the, in the stands, but it's for a highlight tape versus, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to record, record it to teach your kids, not mm -hmm. to make a highlight tape. And then when he has to go against some smoke or he, face, he faces challenges, he doesn't know how to handle those mm -hmm. things. Yep. So for me, it, it is the parents. The parents, uh, even on some of my programs, I got four teams now, you know, don't like the way I may do things. And I'm thinking to myself, like, well, you came to my program for a reason. So, <laughs> right. You know, wish, wish you the best of luck, but you gotta get out of here with right. that type of mindset. Because mm. again, if everything I'm giving the kids and right. we're taking our time, obviously we spend a lot of money as well through this. Yeah, we're not getting paid for it either. At all. So we're taking the time and teaching your kids, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's either you, you, you get down with the program or you gotta get yeah. out of you know, mm -hmm. so it's, just, it's the parents that are kind of watering it down and not being authentic with their kids. Mm. Last up, Don Breed, um, <clears throat> two of the top five assist leaders in the league right now are centers. How do you feel about, you know, you being one of the point guards, one of the real point guards? How do you feel about 
it not being <clears throat> no point guards like you know like it's it's erased all the point guards that's true point guards you Chris Paul is no more guards like that in the league very few rather um I mean it's sad I believe you know you know basketball guys appreciate you know myself and Chris that how the, the way we play the game uh, I believe the right way mm -hmm. you know it wasn't uh I would, not that it, every every guard is scoring down is selfish but at the same time the point guard is a leader of the floor. He's the extension of the coach on the floor. And like right. I said earlier about it, if a lot of these coaches got thrown out of the game, the point guard wouldn't know how to handle the situation. They wouldn't right. know what plays to call down the stretch of the games. They wouldn't know who to get the ball to at certain times, different matchups. So, um, you know, it's, it's sad the game has gone this way. But, again, uh, the league wanted scoring. The so league they want pushed, it. you know, 160-point games. It's like, you know, there's no – defense isn't being, uh, you know, cherished. And there's a defensive uh, man award, but nobody really talks about it. Right. It's not like – that guy's actual defensive player that can stop and play both sides. So mm -hmm. I know you was talking earlier about hand how AE Anthony Edwards plays both sides yeah. of the ball, but guys aren't valued as much. I believe it's like they they'll say a three and D guy, but the stars aren't playing defense. Right, like the stars don't aren't the matchups. And I seen the tape the other day with him checking PG. Yeah, locking that shit up. And I was yeah. like, man, like he wanted that smoke, mm -hmm. and he said that <laughs> since USA that he he's a guy that plays both sides. So to see him actually do this at a young age, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kudos to him. But the point guard is gone, and uh, we respect that. That shit yeah, for sure, doing. absolutely. Yeah. Now, now, it may come back, but at the end of the day, I don't know. Obviously, they're going, they're going European style. Um, uh, they're they're now trying to get to Africa. I mean, they're they're pushing the game mm -hmm. differently, and I don't think the game is being taught or valued as it should be. But you know, that's the way the, the wave is working. Mm -hmm. with, with teams like Phoenix abandoning the point guard completely, how you feel about that? It's I mean, it's, be, I think it's gonna be hard to win that way. I think it does. You know, everyone wants to be different. Um, Again, I don't still see them having a leader on the floor. Because mm -hmm. um, again, you got three great first battle Hall of Famers. They know how to the get their shot first. They get their shot. That's, that's who they are, and that's okay. But uh, for me, like I said, um, that was easy for me to manage in a sense. You know, mm -hmm. I was taught by Doc, uh, great leadership from Sam Cassell, my vets, uh, PJ Brown. But uh, that was my mindset. You know, if it, 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 I was always a selfless player. Uh, I wanted to make my teammates around me their job easier. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter how many greats I played with, I wanted to make them okay. If you average twenty six, let me get you to twenty seven, shooting you know ten more, more six more percentage higher on your field goal mm -hmm. percentage. You know what I mean? So it was like I want to make the game easier, and that's how I studied their game and studied my game to make sure it, it mixed and went well. Mm. Yeah, P was already a thirty point score, but then you getting him. Six to eight easy was right. a game. That was a quick, right. easy 40 on us. Four layups, okay, we're in the yep. field. Let me go to P right now. Now I get P. Now he gets two free throws. Now he's in the rhythm. So it's like, this has been able to manipulate the game that way. I'm pretty sure nobody really thinks that, that right. the game that way. Not Walk no me through the first, you know, football scripted. The first, you know, first two drives are scripted. Walk me through the first three or four minutes of the game when you have yourself Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Kendrick Perkins on the floor. What are you looking for and how are you looking to start the game? Um, I'm looking to dominate in the paint, um, get Ray a wide open look early as possible. Um, it depends on the matchups. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. if you, got, you have to give me a team to where, okay, if who's the weakest link, you know, we're going to attack this guy, particularly on defense. If it's a star player, we're playing against Vince Card, I might want P to go at Vince the first play of the game. Yeah. We're going to set the tone early. He's going to pick up a foul. And then, we, then I'm going right back at him, or it just depends on how the game flow. Mm -hmm. if, if that superstar got a first foul, Doc don't even have to talk to me. We're going right back to the play. <laughs> yeah. Whether I'm coming out of pick and roll and trying yeah. to, you know, uh, bump it to his leg to get the foul, or we're trying to post him, you know, whatever the case may be, I'm trying to get him a second foul out of the game early. And that way, they have to make a quicker adjustment mm -hmm. than we do. Mm -hmm. When you go in the ticket? Um, I mean, it just depends. If he obviously beats a man down the floor, I'm going to him first. Mm -hmm. um, if we want to go inside, then obviously it's, if we're going against a Rashid or McDice, I'm going to take it. If I'm going against Kevin Love, I'm going to Kevin. Uh, who else is back in the day playing against? If I'm going against Tim Duncan, we're going to, we're going to take it. You know what I mean? So it's like whoever had that matchup, the first play of the game, hopefully we was trying to go at that person. This is what I did notice, though, because I played y'all a lot. Y'all gave Perkins bone first play of the game oh, a lot. Absolutely. I mean, the first play of the game, we're going to give him his bone because right. he might not see no more unless exactly. he run the floor. But, but if you if you give him that, now he's going to run through a wall for you. Yeah, him. yeah. So it's like yeah. understanding who your personality is, like I said. So it doesn't always have to be the big three. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think I ever got a first play of the game, but I was okay with that. Again, <laughs> again, I wanted the first assist of the game. But no, nah, yeah. it was uh, like I said, it was it was fun playing with that that, that group of men and um how Doc got us to buy in so quickly uh, and we was able to get it done. Yeah. Right. I'm someone who has a very high Q IQ of the game and and really uh when you say extension of the coach on the floor, like to every sense of the word, that's what you were. No one can figure out Jokic. What would you do if you were coaching against him to try to slow him down? Um, first of all, you have to have the personnel. 
And I think I think the last team to slow them down was us in the bubble. With um, the white. And I think we, like I said, we had White, JaVale, and mm -hmm. we had AD. So we had three seven-footers that we can throw at them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the closest team is Cat healthy or he's done for the season. Right now, he's not. He'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. He'll be back right later. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the, the team looks. that has the best shot, it would probably be the two two footers that, you know, Minnesota's can throw at them. But, again, mm. um, if I was a West Coast team, my two bigs would probably be watching Joker the entire year. Mm. You know, if, I, if I'm, I'm prepping that way, I'm studying all his tendencies. I'm seeing, you know, when he draws fouls, when he becomes dominant. I think last night he had like 10 and four, 10 or 12, some low scoring game, but I'm, I'm watching this game, seeing what happened, what do they do differently? Or mm -hmm. I know uh, Michael Porter Jr. had it going, but it's like, what game, where is games where he was slowed down? Let's figure out what we can do to still, you know, those to try to bring out those tendencies versus the game he said 40. And those games, I'm watching those games as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did he get grit? How many free throws did he shoot? How many three attempts did he make? You know what I mean? So I'm breaking the game down, or his game in particular. The entire season, if I got to go against him mm, in the playoffs, mm. it's very and, and very few games where people were, were, were able to do this. But when you make him try to score over you, because he he's real crafty, he's not fast, but he know how to get around you. Yeah. But if you if you constantly make him try to score over you, he has trouble because he's not athletic. No, he's not athletic. You know and that's saying? why he crafty though. That's why I feel like our bigs, we were able to throw Dwight. He was able to you know put a body mm -hmm. on physicality. He Javel. had to that's long, athletic. Um, you know, a student of the game, and you got AD that doesn't have to check him every possession, but. Now he has to go against AD. So now when we get an offense, AD's attacking Joker. So he has to do that. You want him to play both, both sides. sides. Yeah, I was going to um, say that. Put him in pick and roll. Put him in pin downs. If that big isn't a great, you know, score, put him in a lot of pin downs. Force him to switch. If not, attack him. Mm -hmm. Love it. Uh, Paul recently said on Draymond's uh, podcast that you went to Ticket University early on. I did. What did that mean? <laughs> I did. What did that I mean did. and what did you learn? Um, and I learned so much. Um you know, he was the one guy that when I did fuck up, you know, he always called me and be like, yo, you, you either was right or you was wrong. And he always kept it real with me. And I appreciate that from a from a vet standpoint because a lot of people wouldn't tell me the truth. You know what I mean? They probably continue to kiss my ass or not hold me accountable to the level I need to be held accountable to if I want to be great. Um, discipline. You know, his, his, he's, a, he's a, probably the most disciplined guy I've ever played with. You know, doing this shit every day in the weight room every day. Um, being a professional, taking care of his body. You know, he might be in to get a massage for two hours. Then he might go to the cold tub. Then he might get shots up. So he was, he does, he did everything consistently every day. And I think that helped me become a better professional. Mm -hmm. Understanding I had, I had him every day. I had Ray that was showing up at four o'clock on game days, getting shots up before the lights came on. And then I had Paul that would, I would come in at midnight, thinking I'm in the gym by myself. He'd be upstairs on the treadmill. So it's like <laughs> I had all these vets that was like, damn, okay, like, oh, okay. And I was just. A sponge. I'm writing everything down possible to try to, you know, mm. implement it in my pot and be great. Mm -hmm. You spoke to something that is gone from the game these days is vets. Right. How important do you feel like or or, or how do you feel like the, the, the NBA is lacking by not having these? And we've said this before, when we came in the league, there could be guys that are 36, 37, 38, pushing 40. Right. Some, 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 you know, some help on the court, but some just help in the right. locker room, on the flights, bridge the gas with the coaches. What is the NBA missing by not having vets anymore? Um, they're missing a lot. Like I said, they're missing um, a lot of discipline off the court for the young guys, knowing how to move, um, knowing how to work, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and knowing how to be great teammates. You know what I mean? Like the game isn't always just about the game. You know, I think back in the day when vets were around the team, you know, we had a, like a lot more events off the court. You know what I mean? Like together. showing up to each other. Yeah, it was more together and there's more camaraderie mm -hmm. off the court as a team. And again, it may not always have to like each other, but you show it for each other's events. And now I'm just kind of like, it's about me, my brand. It's all, you know, it's nothing else about the team or outside of anything else but me versus, you know, being a team. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the NBA knew what they were doing. Uh, they wanted uh, people they could control. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with the vets in the locker room, you know, there's not as many yes men or people that mm -hmm. are, just say, you know, you can say anything to them and not have any resistance. So mm -hmm. uh, they had to get the vets out of there in my, in, my, in my thinking. A lot mm -hmm. of my boys went out at that particular age because I felt like they couldn't control them anymore. And they taught us how to be professionals. Right. I know that's one thing I give credit to Steve uh, Smith and Kevin Willis and even Steve Kerr all of them. They taught, they taught me how to be a professional, right. bro, to deal with getting taken out the game and being mad at coach and all right. those type of things. Not not having that, that'll end your career. That's Early, your career right, yeah. short. Yeah. No, that's definitely helped bridge yeah. the gap. Um, Celtics this year, uh, I think right up there with odds on favorite to win it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think they are are, are, are real contenders uh, to to bring home that first ring with this this Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown group? I do. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm biased, but being real as well, they um they have a great group of young men, and I think they have enough guys that um, are hungry that's almost been there, and they have a champ in Drew um, that has been there, and uh, 
Sam Cassell's on the sideline. Um, Joe, I love you know working with him when I was out there, just learning from him a couple of days mm -hmm. uh, in Boston, watching how he works and how he's able to get guys to buy in. And when he speaks, everyone is you know all like eyes that. up and paying attention to him. If he, he has he has the locker room. Uh, he's commanded their attention, and they also um, mix with an Al Horford type of vet, mm -hmm. you know, like guys that, like I said, haven't always made it to the top, but have been right there at that particular time. And now, like now, um, they have the group in mind that's, that's done it. Like I said, they were so close last two years. Uh, hopefully, this is the year they get it done. I think yeah. Porzingis' health is going to be important. <laughs> Definitely, Porzingis. Porzingis is a problem, but he just got to stay healthy. What does the global game, you've touched on this earlier, but what does the global game of the NBA look like in the next 10 to 15 years? I mean, they're already – in Africa, they're trying to expand, you know, to these different continents. What does the game as a whole look like when our kids are old enough to play? I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. I mean, I don't think there's gonna be many Americans in the NBA, mm. possibly uh, in 10, 15 years. Um, it's, it's gonna be tough to say, you know, predict the future, but I think possibly a percentage of the NBA games will be in, the, in these different parts of the world. Right. Um, you know, like I said, it may not be 82 games. It might be shortened by then, 62, maybe 20 guys are touring over in, you know, in Europe, touring over in Africa, playing, you know, two, three weeks at a time, and then coming back to the States. I think it'll be a rotation of that possibly, but um, I don't know what he's going to do. That's still a lot too. That's a lot. <laughs> it, it can change really quickly as, as it has since, you know, I've started and now where the game is going now. So, um, you know, it's all about the dollar and, mm -hmm. and <laughs> they're going to do what it takes to, to continue to make it and get the pie bigger, which is why we're able to see these type of contracts and these deals. Absolutely. You feel strong about Boston coming out of the East? In the West, Denver, Clippers, anyone you, you, you think has a... Man, it's a... Uh, top, my top three right now would probably be um, Minnesota, Denver, and the Clippers. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't choose. I, think, I feel like Minnesota has a Clippers number, um, particularly one player. Mm -hmm. it, it, he ain't <laughs> he do. playing. Yeah. Uh, when you go against some boys, like I said, he he's gonna give them their best shot, and he wants it. So um, I think they have a great chance of getting it done. But again, I can't I can't count out the champs. You know, Joker is is the, is the man. Mm -hmm. um, then, like I said, his sidekick uh, Murray, yep. he's going crazy. Then you got Michael Porter's getting more and more confidence. Aaron Gordon, um, Ag, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they got a whip. And then, like I said, they they're well. Um, they were well oiled. They were a machine. They've been there before. They, they are missing a, a big piece, I believe, in um, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Bruce Brown. Bruce, Bruce Brown. Brown. Yep. And um, they're trying know. to fill that void with Peyton Watson and uh, Bron. I like Peyton Watson. Bron, the kid from Kansas. Yeah, the little white boy was nice. Yeah. Brown. Brown. I like him. We'll, we'll see how it works out because yeah. um, you know I think the Celtics did the same thing, mm -hmm. and we thought we could replace uh, yeah. Tony Allen. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, it was like. Yeah, we, we get back. You know, obviously, we, Kevin doesn't get hurt. It's what if, what if. But mm -hmm. um, those t type of guys, you know, you can't just replace and, and mm -hmm. think they aren't as valued. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. whether they may be on the court or off the court, those Absolutely. guys are key pieces to uh, championships. You're on campus with some superstars. I Reed, am. <laughs> Reed Shepard, DJ Wagner, Rob Dillingham. Uh, you get a chance to run into them at all. And, and what do you think about this group of kids and and you know they're talking about you know at least two or three of them, two of them are going to be lottery picks right um funny thing is uh <clears throat> before my child was born my baby girl um six months ago i had class with dillingham and um i think bradshaw so we had a little journalist class that was fun <clears throat> and of course uh, me and rob kind of clicked right away mm -hmm. first day walking to school we kind of like clicked up and i was like man, i've been looking for you then obviously he wanted to holler at me too as well so uh, that was fun, fun moment. But obviously, my baby girl came. I had to drop a class, and now I'm back down to 12 mm -hmm. hours. But that was a class I had with those guys. Um, one of my good friends, John Welch, is assistant coach mm -hmm. in Kentucky. John. So I was in Sacramento with John. Mm -hmm. And I go to his office from time to time, sit in and talk, watch the game, uh, I watch him work out, read, you know, um, Dillingham every once in a while. So uh, it's been great having those guys around, um, you know, like they're seeing their stardom grow and the way they play the game. You know, I've actually taken a couple of my AU teams to see Kentucky play, and I always tell them to watch Reed. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody loves Rob and want to be, you know, mm -hmm. Rob, with Rob the shifts. Cause, yeah, because Rob, you know, he got he has moves. And I tell him watch Rob obviously for the one on one game, but I'm like, watch how Reed controls the Plays game. The yeah. game. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, he knows the game. He's always in the right spot. You know, he's not the most athletic. He's not the fastest, but his uh, IQ though, his yeah. I, bingo, his IQ. He's able to manipulate the game, and now he's talking about being some picks. He's number one pick in the mm. game. Not <laughs> crazy all IQ. How he jumps. I mean, obviously, and the way he shoots the basketball. Yeah, and I, I've seen him work. Um, they got some stuff down there in Kentucky, and I can't wait to get my son up there and get some work in as well. Yeah, that's dope. Stuff. I yeah. love it. Um, the women's game in college basketball has grown tremendously. Have yeah. you been able to catch any of these young female stars on the rise? Um, on on the highlights, but not okay. you know specifically studied the game. Uh -huh. and, and I'm a big fan of the women's game. Mm -hmm. But like I said, with my schedule, 
kid, school. New baby. New baby. Congratulations, playing, by the way. Playing a wedding in a couple months. I mean, I'm oh, just. Oh, shit. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We got to We got to send some mezcal to the wedding. Yeah, we got to be it's there. In, yeah, man. Yeah. So it's in uh, Italy, so. Ooh, oh, you don't know what we're saying. We'll send it when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. On being inducted. Appreciate it. Congrats to you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Brother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Uh, that meant a lot to me. Tell me, Absolutely. you know, first of all, congratulations. But how does it feel to you to be, you know, in the OK Hall of Fame? The Man, best high school ever. Best high school ever. Um, you know, being there, looking at that wall, um, all the names on that wall, it's, it's definitely a humbling experience. And it's an honor to be on that, you know, that ballot, mm -hmm. um, especially guys like yourself. Uh, all the greats that has such an impact on the league as well. Uh, but being at that school, like I said, if you know, you know, and it's uh, it, it definitely changed my life, one thousand percent. Would you send your son there? Would I send my son there? I, if my son was top ten in the country, maybe it just depends on what the talent that he was playing with at yeah. that particular time. You know, mm -hmm. for me, like I said, Oak Hill, uh, I wasn't playing with the best talent where I'm from in Louisville, Kentucky. So I mean, I'm playing with guys. My big, the biggest guy on my team was six, you know, six three. When I got to go to Oak Hill, I got Brian Johnson, 6'10", Josh Smith, 6'8", 45-inch vertical. You know, so it was like, <laughs> I got to really, crazy, though. I got to really, you know what I mean, like explore my game crazy. to where I just have to just go try to score 60 every time. Like I was able to now become a real true point guard, being able to get guys. I think that's pretty much where it started for me at Oak Hill. So I was able to manipulate the game and get guys open, keep guys happy, and then be an extension of Coach Smith on the court to where I need to do what I needed to do for him. Uh-huh. Put your, out of all the players, Went to Oak Hill that you know, go ahead, put make your own starting five. Starting five? Yeah, out of all the players that's been there. Starting five. I'll tell, tell you mine, because I had I had I had well, I'll tell you mine after. Ross Strickland said he was a big fan of you. Oh, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 let's go. Starting five. Mm hmm Don't be bashful. I'm not. I might have to go with um K remember you can't use K D because he didn't graduate from Oak Hill. I can't use K D? He didn't graduate from Oak Hill. Say less. <laughs> Okay. Jack bringing the rules in this. Nah, okay. if okay. you was at Oak Hill, that's how we go. Man. That's how we go. That's how Coach Smith said. Yeah, yeah. Coach yeah. Said it and Quinn Cook. Yes. It. I respect it. Let's go with um, Stack, Jerry Stackhouse. Oh, he, he, he's. The, I knew who he was talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> I knew who he was talking about. Um, I gotta go with Josh Smith. Yeah. Carmelo. Mm. Ryan Mercer. Um, who's running the show? Who's running the show? It can't be me. Yeah, it can't be you. Yeah, that's what I said. Don't be bashful. It can yeah. be you. Oh, then me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to play with it, but I mean, if to. not me, I might have to go with a bigger lineup. I mean, you know, shout out to Strick, yep. um, Jack, Brandon Jennings. I mean, it's so much talent. It's man. a lot of yeah. <laughs> it's so much love, like if you, if you ask somebody, if you ask somebody, it's gonna be different every yeah. time. Yeah. You're gonna think yeah. I would go since we since you here. I would mm -hmm. go you. Uh, me at the two, Stack at the three, Melo at the four, Josh Smith at the five. Mm, that's, a, that's this day. That's the NBA <laughs> yeah, now. You're yeah. kill right now. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. NBA now. Yeah. Dogs and bucky getters. Right. Um, is it true you have a superstition about showering? Um, I do. I what did. Is it? Um, what is it? Tell to I, us. I always shower 45 minutes on the clock. Um, right before, you know, I depend on what time you did meetings, but you meetings at 35, I would shower 10 minutes before, give myself about seven minutes in the shower and then come out. Then I would put my uniform on, right, as the coach is talking. Mm -hmm. Some coaches liked it, some didn't, but for the most mm -hmm. part, I was able to pull my vet move and get it done. Mm -hmm. um, but I showered on game days usually probably about five times on Damn, game days. five times? Five times, yeah. And yeah. what does it do? Just kind of reset you, relax you? Yeah, what just kind of refresh me. No, I'm like, yeah. so obviously shower when you get up, come back mm -hmm. home, shoot around, mm -hmm. uh, take a nap, get up, shower, yeah. then, yeah. then go to the arena, shower, and after the game, shower. So yeah. it, it was, you know, it That's was. That's about right. That's about right. I mean, you, you, I would hope you take at least three yeah, on game day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least, at least but yeah, three on game yeah. day. So, so now not playing anymore, do you still have the superstition of having to get a certain amount of showers? No, nah, no. Nah, Are you cool with it? Yeah, now? I'm just focused on trying to work out every day. Okay. And that's then, it. Yeah, then shower after that. But no, nah, that's, that's it. 16 years, two time champ, four time all star, four time all defensive, top 15 all time and all uh, assists, along mm -hmm. with John Stockton, Magic Johnson, Steve Nash, one of four players to average 11 assists for four or more seasons. And hell, burnout. Hell of a hell of a resume. Appreciate and burnout. Is is, is is have we seen have we seen the last of Rajon Rondo in the NBA? Absolutely. It's official. You done. Yeah, yeah I'm done. I can't I can't uh 
I gotta spend time. I'd rather spend time with my kids. Absolutely, than, than I, we kids see you that, enjoy that. Dog. Uh, you know, making two hundred million dollars. And I'm, you know, telling them certain things. They're like, ah, I'm like now nah, I'm gonna go with my kids over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. When you sit back and look, because most of the time in the moment we never get a chance to. When we just read your accolades, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other shit we didn't list, but just the plane rides, the locker rooms, the bus rides. Like when you sit back and look out over, what do you think? Uh, what a time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it was uh, definitely something that I would never took for granted you know while i was in the game uh, i loved every minute of it and i appreciate the brotherhood that i've was able to share and, and bond and and grow with over the years you know what i mean i learned so much in this game and um it's made me the man who i am today mm-hmm. you know what i mean all the all the ups and downs um part of my life but being able to uh for me it wasn't necessarily about the money it was about when i first was introduced to this game um my mentor is mike bibby Derek anderson uh, it was just their free time in the summertime. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, y'all get to work out in the morning and y'all done the rest of the summer. You know what I mean? Got to get to, like, a, I would say like a, it's like a school schedule, mm-hmm. like a teacher schedule. You know, you work all winter and then you work and you have fun in the summertime. So for me, that was what initially got me to start to motivate it to work and work and work and try to get to this goal. Because I tell people all the time, like, this wasn't a, a, a dream of mine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a different, it was a goal. And uh, I was able to lock in, stay disciplined. I didn't party a lot in college. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just don't party because now I'm going back. I don't party at all. So I just I, I skipped that. But again, it was worth the sacrifice of me getting to where I wanted to be in life. And uh, I was underdog, underdog my whole life. You know what I mean? I was always, I feel like I got to overachieve and uh, was counted out. But you know, I understood what it took to get there. And I was blessed and fortunate to have the right people around me to, to keep me going. You know, when times weren't as good and to persevere and understood that cream always rises to the top. Mm. You was involved in... Um... The maybe the most historic pickup game in my hometown, Ooh. I think. Whether it was you when y'all was down at for Perks um, camp. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You so my hometown <laughs> and coach got coach is gonna release the footage. You guys gonna give it to us, but it's KD, you, James, me, Perk, and a couple other pros uh, that was on OKC, OKC team. But it was a whole bunch of people from my hometown, and this was the first time where we had a pickup game with this many pros. That was. The memorable yeah. moment in my hometown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Absolutely, yeah. It was it yeah. was one of the best pickup games I've ever played in, bro. And like for my hometown, yeah. like that that was like a professional game right. played in Port Arthur. Yeah, so Absolutely. we got footage of it too. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna see the footage. Okay. It, it was yeah, unbelievable that game, dog. Yeah, we uh, and they was, was all in their prime. You no, know, James, KD, him, they all was in their prime too. We did the same thing at Kentucky, uh, the lockout year. We had, with all like the said, pros, that's where all the pros. We always have different cities we meet up and hoop. Like that was that was a good old day. <laughs> the lockout good. was fun because there was a lot of legendary pickup games right. that, that, that yeah. kind of they, they were put together and happened. We had yeah. one in the Bay with the We Believe team versus the Current. So that was the young Steph, okay. Jeremy yeah. Lin, our old squad. It was that lockout time was fun. Yeah. That that game with Melo and Bron. Kobe had some games. It was. The locker has some action. Classic. Yeah, I wish yeah. those were, wish those mm-hmm. were film. Yeah, that was good. yeah for real. Yeah. Who is Rayshon Rondo outside of basketball today? Man, a future husband. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, talk that you know, shit. Uh, a college student, you know, <sighs> going back. I'm trying to actually, what you said about your kid. My daughter is actually, um, UK has been on her line a little oh, bit. Oh, really? So I told her, I'm, I'm going to try to get at her before you graduate or if I don't. You know, she come we, kick we with ride to school together. Right. So, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, you know, dad. I love it. You know, I'm a full time dad as much as I can be. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm I'm pretty active and I say I got a brand new daughter. So that's me, man. Like I said, just trying to be the best husband I can be, uh, become closer to God and just can you be a better person each day. Mm, that's it. Love it. That's it. Quick hitters, uh, one piece of advice you would give a young hooper right now. <sighs> Don't chase the money, man. Chase getting better each day. You know, fall in love with getting better each day. Take it one day at a time. Don't look at the rankings. Don't look at the gram. Um, like I said, I was I was ranked 2,000 my senior year in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to Oak Hills. I was able to get exposure. I, I worked every day. It came in Mickey D's, and then you know the rest is history. But like I said, I was always just a worker. Like I didn't give a, you know I didn't give a shit about anything else, but just getting better each day. Mm-hmm. Same same road, Oak okay. yeah. Um Childhood crush. Or. Um, Shout out to Left Eye, man. Rest in peace. Ooh, yeah. rest in yeah. peace. Yeah. That's a good yeah. No one said her. Yeah. That's a good call. I like that. Yeah. Crazy, but God bless her soul. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was doing. One thing you wish you were better at? A better communicator. Ooh. That's the, like that's that. the number one answer. Mm-hmm. We all are. Yeah. We all need We all know we burnt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's your guilty pleasure? Uh, fucking with people that be like, are you? I'm like, no, nah, I ain't me. Or you know, they always... <laughs> yeah. I get that a lot. I don't ever really just like I said. They mess with me. If they don't ask me or say who I am, I act like I don't. Yeah, no. Nah. I, I get that a lot. Yeah. So 
seeing people fucking with them like that. That's, that's cool. Most underrated player you played with or against in your tenure? I have to go with my probably my boy Josh Smith. Mm. I mean, I think he was uh, that Atlanta Smith. I mean, Atlanta Hawk team he played with. Uh, I think he had a, a you know a big portion of where, where they were successful. No uh, question. He, he did everything. You know, he ran the floor, blocked shots, uh, played defense. I mean, he was he was an intangible guy. Uh, he never made an All Star game. Um, Joe that. was the man, obviously, but like mm -hmm. I said, I think after that, they had a, a lot of good pieces, man. Al Horford, Mike Bibby, but he was the guy that kind of did it all. Um, his stats are pretty crazy at that yeah. particular age. Block Coming shots, out of high rebounds, school, everything. dunk on you, yeah, look at it yeah. up with a three-point shot. If you could see one guest on our show, who would it be? But, but you have to help us get your answer on the show. Yeah, I get my boy, Josh Smith for it. I can get that. Definitely get that done. him. Yeah, he's right there in the too. too. He fits and you know what? And he's... Just like Rondo, coach. highly involved coaching mm -hmm. his kids. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. own we, program. Right? We were involved. just together. Like I said, we uh, yeah. That's some yeah. of my favorite. I mean, getting a chance to see people we played against as yeah. we're there coaching our kids or as we're there watching right. our kids. Like that's that to me. That was that's really underrated. What I've enjoyed in this. Part. I've been in it since seventeen. Since I retired, I've been coaching the boys and yeah. you know about to start up again. But getting a chance to run into each other at these tournaments right, and yeah. kind of catching up and, and kind of like age, smiling, yeah, like, yeah, smiling, yeah. And, you know, just seeing our kids, you know, enjoy what they do and we enjoy. Getting back together, man. That's definitely. We, we got to get part. that. We got to get that. Um, that tournament oh, we, going. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're all the dads. Yeah. We, we all the Dad teams playing. Yeah. Get the yeah. Get the kids, and we got the doctor we're rolling with too. Right. So. Dad, Again, man, welcome to the family. Appreciate we it. appreciate yes, your time, man. Appreciate Definitely you. looking forward to working and building Double with you. Uh, yes, congratulations sir. on a tremendous career. Uh, congratulations on the new daughter. And best of luck with the wedding coming yes, up sir. soon, man. Congrats. You can find this man at All The Smoke Productions all day, every day. I want to thank the Ziggy Hotel for the hospitality. You guys opened up your doors, allowed us to do a photo shoot. Thank you very much. Shoot a much. show. Yep. Burn down. Oh, good. Drink. Food. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. Appreciate you. We'll definitely be back. But you can catch this on All the Smoke Productions, YouTube, and the DraftKings Network. We'll see y'all next week.